Vivek Ramaswamy's town hall on CNN this week got a bit out of hand after he claimed that federal agents were involved with January 6th. The reality is we know that there were federal law enforcement agents in that field. We don't know how many. I think it's Mr. shameful. If, if I may finish just answering, well, let me just. Is, this is really I, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you here because because you're I know this, that there the establishment were, doesn't approve of this message. I know that there this, were federal we agents. Be able to talk about this. You're saying that there were federal this is, agents. This is important to talk about. <laughs> this, you this are saying important. there were federal agents in the pad on on, yes. on January 6th. Yep. There is no evidence that there were federal agents in the crowd on January so, 6th. So why, before Congress, when pressed on what the number was, they didn't say there were none. They just couldn't so say how many there were. So you're saying that there's no, that you have not seen evi any evidence so that we've there seen were, multiple, and so we've seen multiple informants were. suggesting that there were. We know people were, we know people were FBI informants who were asked to Is there this. any may evidence? I, may, I, may I just, may just there, finish me, this well, and let me, you can come back and question me. Well, let me clarify. I know this is very uncomfortable for you. I'm going to clarify my question I know this is an uncomfortable issue for many people, but we have to do the truth here. I'm going to clarify my question because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm asking. I understand this. Deeply. And I told you, I was where with you three years the, ago. I'm where not there now. Where is the evidence? Yes. Where is the evidence that the government had a plot, so let's do this. an inside I, job? But no, no, no I'm going to tell you what inside job is because I'm not going to. I'm not violent on January 6th. Where I'm not going to let you put words in my that? mouth. I'm going to put my words in my mouth. And I'm going to tell you what, what I mean by that. Where is the evidence that the government was involved Entrapment. in planning or executing okay. January 6th? Where so I'm going, to, I'm, going to give you, I'm going to give you hard facts. And, and if I may, Abby, I know this is going to be a little uncomfortable. But we're going to, we're, we're going to go through this and you can, and you can, you can push Just back on it. Just the evidence. That. And you can push back on that. And let's do this fairly. All right. So this had a lot of engagement on social media, I think, largely because of the tone of the exchange. And so there's kind of two conversations going on here about the merits of the exchange and the factual accuracy of uh, Vivek Ramaswamy's claims, and then whether or not the exchange was productive as a consequence well, of how they were certainly not, with each other. Uh, productive as an exchange. Um, I do think, I mean, she jumped out on him way too early. Um, it, it, so what he said was, we know there were federal agents there on January 6th. Um, that might, I think it would be, what he then subsequently said, it would be naive to assume that there were no federal agents. They, they could be there for benign purposes, sure. for just monitoring extremist groups. Sure. But we know is that vigilant, right-wing vigilante groups um, uh, are, are crawling with law enforcement and FBI informants. It's absolutely the case that there were FBI informants there. In fact, Enrico Tario, the Proud Boys leader, wasn't there, Got still got 25 years or however many for terrorism. He was at one point an FBI informant. That's confirmed, right. that's true. Although, These people work with FBI, law enforcement, turn on each other all the time. Yeah. That's all the reality of these situations. Now that is different from saying that like the whole thing was some kind of inside plot, right. but she cut him off before he even came close to saying anything like that. Well, an informant and an agent are also Yeah, different. well, yes, sure. So it, what stri it strikes me that he would actually be better served just answering her questions, since through the combativeness, he was able to articulate some points that I think a skeptical CNN audience would do well to hear, as opposed to just what sounds like a summary accusation. Sure. So Vivek Ramaswamy saying, not that he said it was an inside job, but that there were, um, the, the government knew this was going to happen, their informants were in the field, and they perhaps even instigated it and encouraged it and wanted it to happen. It was a false flag. Again, I'm not saying that he said that, but I, however mm -hmm. you want to characterize it, we all get what he's getting at. For if, if a CNN audience who has never heard any substantiation of those claims hears that, they're not going to believe it. So Abby Martin, sorry, geez, Abby Phillips asking a follow-up question um, where she says, okay, what do you, what is the proof of that? What is the evidence of that? That's actually a really important question that he should say, thank you for the opportunity to explain. Here's what we know. And he later ends up getting into some of the stuff about the Gretchen Whitmer plot yes, and all which that, is which is important to be able to very unpack important the context, audience. Yes. The thing about Vivek Ramaswamy is that I think sometimes he chooses to make an enemy out of the interlocutor instead of taking it as an opportunity to give the answer that he actually has. He's not mm -hmm. unprepared. He has answers to these questions that might even be persuasive, but they do get lost when you presume that every question, even the most anodyne question, of course, Abby Phillips is going to ask a follow-up when you make an assertion. What is the factual basis for that assertion? That doesn't make her out to get you. She's doing her job as a journalist. Wait until you're asked a leading question, an unfair question, which Abby Phillips has the capacity yeah. to ask. 
Believe well, me, I'm not some big defender of her, as we I, talked I'm not, about yesterday with, yeah. with the yeah. 2020 you're defender debates. of Abby Martin, not Abby Phillips. <laughs> <Right? laughs> no, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I think she interjected too early in this exchange when she immediately jumped on him for the, for the federal agents. Um, uh, a question, but I, I agree with you that if he'd been a li little less combative, it would have been helpful for that audience to understand yes. that this is not, there is a long history of law enforcement, of FBI involvement in right-wing groups. They, they often, they have agents who infiltrate them, and, and even more commonly, they have people in those groups that are informants that are being paid to carry out uh, plots th that are being organized in the group. That is exactly what happened in the Gretchen Whitmer case. It's not a conspiracy at all. It's shown in the court documents that you had multiple people who were being paid to go forward with this. The FBI knew about it the whole time. Yeah. Um, that, again, we don't have that level of verification that that's what happened on January 6th. Yes. Lots of stuff happened. It was a chaotic scene yeah. where a lot of people were engaged in First Amendment protected activity and didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And a lot of people hy perhaps hyped up because of Donald Trump's remarks, um, smashed some windows and, and marched in. It was, what I saw was very, seemed very chaotic and frankly unorganized to me. It seemed a spontaneous crowd action based on a crowd getting out of control. But you do have, a, a, you know, of course, there was the one figure, Ray Epps, who has not been demonstrated to have been a government agent, which is important to note, but did in fact say on the day before, seemed to have a plan, articulate, we should go into the Capitol, and then was actually shouted down by the people around him saying, nope, nope, People inducing you to commit crimes and, and you know, saner, smarter people on the right know that if you're being in, instructed to commit a crime, that person probably law, could be law enforcement, sure. not verified. Could be, it's a bad idea anyway. Yeah. So that is all, I think, important context, and that's all true. And that doesn't involve any speculation or conspiracy, and that's important for understanding what happened on January 6th. So my criticism of Abby Phillips is that there are times when people are so afraid that the articulation of a fact that is untrue is so, or that they perceive to be untrue, is so like psychologically damaging that you can't let it sit for a second right. before jumping in and, and cutting off uh, the question or trying to correct the record. And I do think if she had given him enough space to make his case, then he would have created openings for himself to be rightfully questioned. So let him make the case about how there's this evidence that there were, in fact, all of these paid informants in the crowd. And say, if you're listening to his answer, then you have the opportunity to say, OK, there were paid informants in the crowd. Is that the same thing as saying that these were people acting on behalf of the government, FBI, members of the FBI themselves? And what is the evidence that those paid informants were not just there in an observational capacity, like many journalists yes. were there and others were there, but that they, in fact, incited the action at the uh, Capitol and that but for their involvement, the violence wouldn't have taken place? That's a harder question for Vivek Ramaswamy to answer, which she never gets to because she's so concerned about what does it mean for him to get on CNN yeah. stage and say there were paid informants, which is in fact substantiated. It's also just kind of funny because again, the liberal the liberal CNN position on January 6th is that it was incited by the government. It was incited by, by the Donald president, Trump, right. Donald Trump. So right. it's kind of funny that we're arguing about this. Yeah. Um, what it, it reminds me a little bit of some some of the COVID, especially around like around ivermectin or something. The, the, the need to jump on people with, with so strongly that then that itself becomes untrue. Like the yeah. stop. Why are you telling people to take a horse dewormer? You know that kind of thing. Like okay, well, actually, people do take this drug. There's medical purposes for it. Yeah. If, if you're taking it in, you know, recommended, FDA recommended doses, you're not harming yourself. It's not dangerous. And people should have the right to experiment with different treatment. This is a new disease. We don't know exactly what's going to cure it. However, if you've looked at, you know, the research we've gathered so far, there isn't strong, it, it's certainly not a, like, a cure cure. There's not, there's, the, the research is kind of divided. Um, it looks more compelling to me in areas where you're treating an, the underlying condition of parasitic worms that maybe then it is helping you because you have worms. But it, it, you know, it's still, people should, it, it's not so clear cut and there's a lot of research out there. That's the like factual part of it. And, but people just got stomped on by yeah. mainstream media gatekeepers. I, and I do wonder, again, every time there's a debate, there's a lot of attention to Vivek Ramaswamy because of this style, but it's not translating into a rise in the polls. It is Nikki Haley, who is the one presidential candidate that's been gaining a share of the vote. Obviously, no one's anywhere near competitive with Donald Trump. But it's Nikki Haley who's been able to grow here. And I do wonder if there's diminishing returns for Vivek Ramaswamy 
acting as though everybody is the most extreme hostile agent in the world. There are, there's a way to catch flies with, with, with more uh, honey than vinegar. And if every single person you interact with is, is accusing you of being combative and is obviously combative with you. I mean, I'm no fan of uh, Sean Hannity's politics. I don't share uh, Abby Phillips's politics. But at a certain point, both interlocutors, both both interviewers are telling him, you're misrepresenting what you said him before bef in the past. You're not responding to quotes that I have from previous statements, and you're switching your words around and moving the goalpost. You're not allowing me to get out a question. You're accusing me of being um, an enemy of the truth and having bad motives and all of those things, which I would argue, yeah, many people in corporate media do. But if you're literally calling every single person <laughs> that you engage with who's not named Elon Musk, uh, those kinds of names, at a certain point, you start to look like the problem. Yeah, I mean, I think Ramaswamy's biggest problem is that people, the people who like him also like Donald Trump, and Donald Trump is like their first choice and is mm -hmm. still running. I think Donald Trump is not in the, you're saying versus Nikki Haley, for instance. Mm -hmm. Nikki Haley obviously is doing well for herself and is cornering the ready to move on from Trump vote more than DeSantis so far. I, I think it would not surprise me to learn Vivek is more popular than Nikki Haley if you ruled out in like a kind of ranked choice voting sort of way. But given that Trump's in the race, he can't improve his numbers because all the people who would like him the most like Trump. First, do you yeah, know what I'm saying? You know, I, I hear that, but even but to the extent we'll he's see. trying to capture the same sort of energy as Donald Trump, you can see the par the the mimicry, right? You can see the parallels. The same way earlier in the debates, he was quite obviously doing a Barack Obama uh, imitation that Chris Christie famously caught out. But unlike Trump, and again, this will be clipped and people will be upset with me for saying this. Trump has a sort of lightness and humor about him that actually makes watching him give speeches and stuff, even if you. have vehemently disagree with his politics. Amusing. I, I watched that event that he did, some clips from the event that he did in D.C. Uh, a few days or maybe a week ago, the black tie event, where he was, you know, making remarks and joking about Ron DeSantis, high heels. You know, he, he makes a lot of jokes. <laughs> you can say they're in a, inappropriate, get it? but there's, yeah. there's a well, kind of um, a, a lightness about what Donald Trump is doing. It's not attack mode 100% of the time. And Vivek Ramaswamy, I think he's not quite landing that kind of showmanship that people, rightly or wrongly, are appreciating Some about Donald like Trump. people like the show of him owning uh, Abby Phillips type people, owning Nikki Haley, but it's certainly not for everyone. I, I mean, I gotta concede that, but uh, he seems uh, he seems very popular among a segment of conservatives for sure, but. It, is it going to be enough, given there's Trump? It, I don't if think you so. look like the bad faith actor, right? It's, it's people are coming to this with their priors. Yeah. Obviously, some people are going to look at Abby Phillips and say, you're CNN, you're corporate media, you're a bad faith actor. Some people are going to look at Vivek Ramaswamy. You're a Republican, you're a Trumper, da, 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 you're a bad faith actor. Changing people's minds requires you looking like you are undermining people's prior conceived notions of you. Vivek is not doing that. Mm. And that, that, I think, is fundamentally going to be what creates a, a ceiling for him. Abby Phillips also could have taken a bigger high road and said, I really want to give you an opportunity to talk. I really want to get—it's hard to know what she really did say, frankly, because she barely got a word out. But if you seem like you are so—at a certain point, it starts to seem like he's almost afraid to let the other person talk. They're both afraid to let each other talk because they won't engage with the substance of their viewpoints. They just want to outmuscle each other rhetorically. And that helps no one. Hmm. It makes neither of them look very good, in my opinion. Hmm. They should take a lesson from us. I think they should. More people should. <laughs> uh, well, tell us what you think about the exchange, and we'll have more rising right after this.